Welcome to Significant Figures. Intro to Significant Figures. Okay, if you've read the directions and you've kind of hopefully done this in a progression, everything that I think about doing, right, my, um, and everything I'm doing, I'm trying to do a progression. You start off and you just build, 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 build. Okay? Um, hopefully you have watched the two YouTube videos. Right, just what is, why are we even covering significant figures and why is it important? From my understanding, it's the first time you've been introduced to this topic. You've been doing math since you could probably hold a pencil, right? You've been doing some math, um, but you've never covered significant figures. So it's a brand new concept, pretty cool, a um, little bit tedious. And I'm going to tell you from my experience, right? I come from 11 years is a pretty high level chemist, right? Um, run several corporate achievement awards and so forth. So maybe one of the best chemists in Sherwin-Williams uh, in what I was doing. And then 20 years in sales going to, you know, PhDs, a lot, all of them, almost all of them at the higher companies are, are, are doctors in, in chemistry or doctors in chemical engineering. We didn't use significant figures in the field, okay? We didn't really use them on the bench, but it's something you need to know how to do. Um, it is certainly used in academia. So it's one of those things that, um, unless you really worked in the field, you wouldn't know the importance of it or not in real life. And this is one of those that you need to know how to do. Um, because when things get really precise at times, you need to know how to handle that, okay? But more than likely, uh, things are rounded to a tenth, and then with super high precision, small batches, things are rounded to a hundredth, and they just leave it there, okay? But we're gonna take it a step further than that. We're gonna learn significant figures. I'm gonna hold you accountable to it. Um, it's good to know, and it's good practice, okay? Significant figures. You understand what it's about. It's about precision. It's about making sure that your answer isn't more precise than your ability to measure or your answer isn't less precise than your ability to measure. Okay, you want to be right on. A lot of times you maybe in math you've looked at an answer and you didn't round correctly and the teacher says, oh well it's, it's good. It's good enough. We're now getting zeroed in right to the rifle shot, right to the exact answer. And we're going to show you how to do that. You, if you read the instructions, have, before you watch this video, have copied all of this and the, uh, the next page. You've copied it down in your notebook. If we were in school, I'd give this to you as what I call a reference sheet. It'd be printed out. We're not in school, so I don't have the ability to give this to you if you have the ability to take this and send it to yourself in an email because I don't know if you can print on your iPads but if you can print on your iPad you figured out a way or you can send it to yourself in an email and you can print it you don't need to write it you just need to have these rules down the quickest way to probably to do it is write it all right so there you go right you've written all these down I am now going to explain them to you all non zero numbers are what we call significant. They count. They count in precision. So all non-zero numbers are significant. So let's just look at this number. 33.2. Three, the three is non-zero. The other three is non-zero. The decimal point two, point two is non-zero. That has three significant figures in it. I'm going to call it three sig figs okay so it has three significant figures you with me on that okay real good non-zero numbers are easy they count it's all about knowing what to do with zeros 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 that come between non-zero numbers, zeros that come between numbers, zeros in the beginning of your number, and zeros at the end of your number. That's where the real rules come into play. Zeros that are between 
non-zero numbers are, are always significant. So for this number like 2, 0, 5, 1, we call that zero captured or it's sandwiched. It's captured. When it's in between, always counts. So how many significant figures are in the number 2051? There are four. The two, the zero counts because it's between non-zero numbers, the two and the five. Two, zero, five, always, and one, always, right? Non-zero numbers are always significant. One, two, three, four. There are four sig figs. In 2051. Okay, so before we can do anything, we've got to be able to look at a number and pull the amount of significant figures out of that number. Okay, and do that correctly before we can do any mathematical manipulation, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. We have to know the significant figures of each individual number. So that's what we're starting to learn how to do. And 2051 has four. The zero is in between the two and the five, it counts. All right. Leading zeros are never significant. Leading zero, what's a leading zero? Zeros that come in front of your first non-zero number, the first real number, okay? So let's look at this, this number right here, 0 0.0032. Well, Mr. Pierce, you just said that leading zeros are never significant. So that means that this zero, right, this one, this one, and this one don't count, and they don't. So these do not count. If they don't count, then that number only has two significant figures, the three and the two. And that is correct. So this number right here, 0 0.0032, only has two significant figures. It's the 3 and the 2. It has two sig figs. Hopefully you're good with that. Two. Okay, two sig figs. So now we're getting into these zero rules. You got to really watch the zeros because they have some pretty tricky rules. Okay, so we learned that leading zeros are leading zeros are never significant. That's the zeros in front. Okay, how about trailing zeros? That's the numbers after non-zero numbers, right? Well, they follow two rules. Trailing zeros to the right of a decimal are significant. Trailing zeros, tra zeros at the end that come to the right of a decimal are significant. Okay, so So, 9, 2, 0, 0. Each one of these is to the right of the decimal. It's to the right of it. There's the decimal. Those are to the right of it. So they count. They count, right? So then the question is, is how many significant figures does this number have? And hopefully you have said one, two, yes, it counts because of the decimal. Yes, it counts because of the decimal. Yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, four. Hopefully you have said four significant figures. Now that you know that rule, that trailing zeros, zeros at the end of a non-zero digit, right? The two. Hopefully you have said that those zeros count. I got it. The decimal makes these count. That means that whoever measured this 
had precision all the way out to 100, and it was dead on zero. Okay, so there's four significant figures of accuracy in that number. Trailing zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. Cool, got that? Okay, so let's go back and what do we know? Well, we know now, hopefully, for the first time, that all non-zero numbers are significant, right? Whether they're to the right of a decimal or not, they all, if, they're, if there's no zeros in them, they all count. Zeros that come between non-zero numbers count. Leading zeros in front of non-zero numbers never count. Okay, leading zeros never count. And now we're starting to get into the trailing zeros, and we know that trailing zeros to the right of a decimal, trailing zeros to the right of a decimal count. Trailing zeros in a whole number where a decimal is shown counts. Okay, let's go over that. 540 decimal makes that zero count. If that decimal was not there, That decimal was not there, that trailing zero wouldn't count. But since there is a decimal there, that decimal counts. Now, I do, through the years, have heard some really sound arguments. And the sound arguments were, Mr. Pierce, when you write 540, it is assumed that there is a decimal there. You're correct. But when you're trying to show somebody, when you measured something, that you exactly measured the one spot, I want you to count the zero, you have to put a decimal there. Okay, so how many significant figures are here? One, two, the zero counts because of the decimal. Three, you have three significant Figures. I'm just writing SF now. You see, I'm progressing, right? I wrote significant figures to begin with, and I said sig figs. Now I'm just going to write SF. You can just write SF, three significant figures. I know what you mean. 540 decimal has three significant figures. All right. When's it going to end? This is hard. All right? You're doing just fine. You're doing great. Okay. Um... So here we are. Trailing zeros in a whole number with a decimal shown are significant. Trailing zeros, that means at the end, in a whole number with a decimal shown are significant. Okay, and the last one is the easiest, I hope. Is trailing zeros in a whole number with no decimal are never significant. So let's talk about that. And let me go over it and show you this. Go over this whole zero thing real quick with 540. Watch this. 540. No decimal showing. Trailing zeros never count unless there's a decimal. There's a trailing zero. There's no decimal. So the zero doesn't count. The five counts because it's a non-zero number. The four counts. But the zero doesn't count because it is trailing and there's no decimal. So how many significant figures are in 540 no decimal? There are two significant figures. Now watch this. 540 decimal. How many significant figures are in that? Hopefully you said, oh, I know the answer. It's three. Why is it three? The decimal is shown, the trailing zero 
counts. Three significant figures. Good. Let's keep going. 540 decimal zero. What is the significant figures for 540.0? Well, this zero counts because the decimal showing and zeros to the right of a decimal, trailing zeros to the right of a decimal count as significant. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then let's do 500 and 40.00. Hopefully you got that. Five non-zero counts, four non-zero counts. This trailing zero shows the decimal. It counts. There's three zeros to the right of a decimal count. Four and five. One, two, three, four, five. Five significant figures. Great job. That's enough. So proud of you this week. Um, you know, um, so much has gone on behind the scenes here at the high school. Uh, I am, I just can't go on to tell you, you know, uh, how flexible the teachers have had to be, how flexible you have had to be. We sent out all the classroom codes, hit or miss. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. We had to come back in, circle back. We had to literally take and copy and paste and put it over in the in the Gmail to get classroom codes out for you saying thank you for being patient with that learning different styles as soon as you get something done or maybe in the middle of it boom you get this another hit on more assignments right away you're probably your your anxiety level goes up because something came in and you don't want to fall behind you don't want to miss so great job um, I can tell you this I know what hard work looks like, and I know what character looks like, okay? And I know what lies and excuses look like, okay? If you have good character and you come in and say, I just didn't do it, you know, um, man, I was really tired last night, and I just, I, I, I didn't get it done, I can work with that. Okay, if you're hardworking and, you know, we make a plan and you show effort, you're going to do just fine with me. I think, I think you're going to do just fine with a whole lot of people if you just are truthful and honest and you try. Okay, and in that order, I think character is a big one, you know, um, just be truthful and honest and, and, and be accountable for yourself. And uh, most people will make sure you succeed. That's a big one with me, as you can imagine. And then effort. You know, we've got to be trying. Um, when someone says to me, boy, I didn't get this, and I looked it up, and, or I Googled it, or I YouTubed it, and that's fantastic. That's effort. You know, that's, that's great. So without getting long-winded, I want to cut myself off. I want to let you know that uh, I'm very proud of you. I'm very very happy that you're in my class. I hope these little videos are working. Um, let's work together. Let's all be honest with each other, okay? When it comes to the hard issues, go right to the honesty, please. Um, get, it'll get all of us everywhere. If I had a really bad night and I didn't get much done that night, I'm going to come in, I'm going to tell you. You know, I, I kind of failed a little bit last night. I apologize. I'll do everything I can to make it up, but you know, you, that's, so it starts with me. Look forward to a great year. Uh, we are, every day, we're one step closer to getting together and, and being able to do this type of stuff face-to-face. -face. I can look in your eyes. You know, I, I like, I'm a high-energy guy. So have a great weekend. You've earned it. Uh, happy Friday.